Hi, Mark here from the Tangibound Podcast Network and host of the flagship show, the Tangibound Podcast. Did you know that we over at Tangibound are always looking for amazing podcasts to promote? And did you also know that we are also proud nerds and geeks of everything from movies, music, gaming, TV shows, and comic books to wrestling, MMA, soccer, and football? Whatever you can nerd or geek out about, we've got it. And if you're interested, we can help you find it. And if you're a show looking for a place to call home, we've got you covered. Side effects may include upset stomach, dizziness, tumors, shakes, and in some rare cases, death from excessive laughter. Though to be fair, it's only sometimes. Other side effects may include diarrhea, gallstones, heart palpitations, and strong desire for cookies on the dark side. Talk to your doctor and visit TangiboundNetwork.com and see if Tangibound Network is right for you. We're not doctors, therapists, trained professionals of any kind, so if you feel you do need help, please reach out uh, and get the help you need. We have a whole list of things on our files page over on Facebook at facebook.com slash crazylifepodcast, and, uh, or just search on the internet for the suicide prevention hotline number, or um, go to nami.org, or um, whatever resource you can find. But just please reach out for help if you need it. If you feel as though you're going to harm yourself or others, definitely reach out. And try not to be alone. Uh, also, if you uh, feel that way and you realize that you're writing a note or making plans of how you would do, uh, like harm yourself or others, definitely reach out. That's a huge red flag. And uh, lastly, please do not um, re- replace the idea of therapy with listening to this show. Again, if you need help, please reach out and uh, get the help that you need or contact us. We can try to help you find the help that you need. A light sucks to the last drop. Are you going to blow your head off? Take good aim and don't forget to duck. A light sucks every Monday and all the way to Sunday. What's up or how's it hanging? I'd like to buy this world one last drink Life sucks all of the time Stick it up your sunshine And then you'll see the clouds every day And then you'll see the clouds every day And then you'll see the clouds Welcome to the Crazy Life, everyone. My name's Jen. I am your hostess for the evening. And with me, as always, we have Brian and Hanno. Hey, guys. Hi. What's up? Sup. <laughs> Sup. Sup. Hi. <laughs> How's it going? How are we doing today? I was. I felt like crap for a couple of days. Or oh. Whatever that sucks. That doesn't make us have an explicit rating. Language has <laughs> poop. Jeez. Well, that sucks. I'm sorry to hear that. The weird thing about it was, is I actually needed it. The, and then there was the whole part of it where I honestly felt bad, and then was like, okay, I probably should stay home, out of, just in case, you know, right. make sure I don't end up with a fever. Mm-hmm. And I was kind of like. Am I? Do I really need to be home? And it's like, no, just stay home, you know. And and, and I had things to do, uh, computer stuff, so it was fine that I was there. But I felt guilty. Now I could tell I felt a little run down. I was a little congested. My could be allergies, whatever. And then day two came around. And I'm like, yeah, still not feeling it. Yeah, feeling a little guilty maybe about it. But it's like again, prudence, you know, a little yeah. bit of caution. Mm-hmm. And when I woke up this morning, it was like night and day. It was like somebody lifted the fog from my <laughs> It was weird. It was like, oh, wow, I did feel not good. <laughs> it was strange. Like, you know, even though it was kind of an excuse to stay home and get some stuff done, on the other mm-hmm. hand, I was like, like completely different today. Hmm. So that ended up being good. And the one thing that happened to me this over this last week 
is negotiations have still been going on with not so much negotiations. There's just been some emails going back and forth about about band recording stuff. We started rehearsing again because we actually have gigs, and, and I'm like, okay, yeah, we actually should be rehearsing. You done? But the the part of handing the project over to somebody else was still rubbing me wrong, and it was weird. I had to, I was like, what is my motive for this? Why am I feeling so reluctant or you know is it is it so, so it's some sort of a self-centered fear you know whether it's i'm not getting something that i feel like i deserve or is it you know i'm not sure what it is so all of a sudden a potential problem rose up where there could be an issue with us sharing files around and it becomes a giant mess and i'm like okay well we need to stop this right now and I just I said a few things where it's like, okay, this could be a problem. And I laid out a few things that need to be done. And then I just left it at that. And then I went, you know what? Eddie with the person that we're working really talented. Mm. And I still really question my own abilities. Mm. So I have this 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 honest anxiety about sharing things. And finally I was like, nah, just share it. Just lay it out there. What have you got to lose? Nothing. Yeah. So I did so. The response was perfect. It was perfect. It was like, oh, wow. He's like, I don't have any. I'm like, I know you don't have anything right now. You know. And, and it was like, oh, and I hear this and this and this. I'm like, oh, wow, we're on the same page. Well, that's good news. Nice. And yeah, it was great. So that, that felt good. It relieved some of my anxiety. And then... I woke up the next morning and all of a sudden just hit me. It's like that idea of like, let go or be dragged. Yeah. I'm like, I want to be dragged right now. Why do I want to be dragged? <laughs> I can just let go. <laughs> Why right. am I holding on to this? And all of a sudden it was like, I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to take a day off next week and I'm going to get all these songs sent to you. So I don't have to deal with it anymore. <laughs> I was like, why right? am I fighting this? Well, you know, <laughs> and there's such a... it's interesting because it's it's similar to like I've heard people talk about like at Comic Cons and stuff, a lot of times the artists or the editors of comic book companies will do portfolio reviews, you know? So mm -hmm. people go up to these people and you have huge respect for them because they've been in the industry for years, they're successful, all this. A lot of people see them as better than, you know. And, you know, they're always afraid of what, but in the end, a lot of times the people end up giving them nothing but positive feedback, you know, like, or, or, you know, it's at, at least, even if it is negative, it's constructive. But I mean, when, um, like playing magic or anything you do, it's like, if you spend all your time with people who are at your talent level or lower, you're really going to learn a lot, you know, versus if you start associating, you know, it's like being the smartest person in the room, you know? It's great at first, but after a while, you're like, wow, I don't have anyone I can talk to. You know, I'd rather not be the smartest person in the room. Is it if you're the smartest person in the room, you're in the wrong room? It's kind oh, yeah. of, there is something that if you do regard this person not like better, but just differently talented. The idea is, though, is that, you know, you never, like, you could learn something there potentially from maybe they, they come at you with something that's like, hey, have you tried this? And you're like, holy crap, you know, like, I never even thought of that, or vice versa. Maybe something you bring to them ends up being something they've never heard before. And they're like, Oh, this is great. You know? And then you're like, Oh wow. This person who's ton actually, you know, took something from me kind of, a, it's interesting how, but, but like you said, our instinct generally is to be dragged in that scenario rather than just put it out there and maybe be lifted by the other person. You know, it's so funny how our, our ego will do that. It just gets in the way there and, you know, Instead, he's telling us to just hold on and be dragged and, you know, be it, it, it. This is a uh, tie back into my sobriety is this this idea of my higher power. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. Like if if I really if I if I'm willing to that on a daily basis, put my put my life in the care of a higher power. That's got everything for me. I don't need to worry about it. I just need to, you know, where am I standing? What's the next indicated thing? If that's if that's the proposition I've agreed to, then why would I doubt? Why, would, right? Mm -hmm. And it comes down to it's a it's a it's a commitment is what it really comes down to. It's a daily commitment that I turn things over. 
And what do I get from that? A relief from fear and anxiety. Yeah. I don't have to worry about it. Right. It's mm-hmm. someone else's to worry and, and, and whatever oh. about at that point. Yeah. It's just an imaginary thing. Yeah. Right. It doesn't. But how great is that? That's that was the that was the gift for me of sobriety and the paradox of like, like, oh, you mean I became I get more freedom, a commitment. Yeah. (laughs) Well, it is proven that it works because when I'm turning everything over, I'm not worried about what you think about me. Yeah. I don't look at the person walking down the street and wonder if they just gave me a dirty look or not. That's freedom. I'm liberated. Mm -hmm. And yet here I was putting myself into a form of bondage. Why? Because yeah, I must have wanted a little bit of control. There was some ego in there. There was some pride in there. Sure. There was some feeling of I'm invested. Mm-hmm. I want to I want to stay in with this. And yet in the end, it it again turned out to be the truth. The paradox exists is that by giving up control, I get more freedom. You know, like it was just another one of those strange things where I'm willing to make this commitment. And so I made the commitment and, and it's been and it was it was amazing how all of a sudden like, oh, wow, I could do this, this, this and instead. I don't have to worry about this part of it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, and so that was my win. That was my win for the week. And again, a reminder that the, it's there is no finish line. Right. There's no finish line. And any time that I'm disturbed by something and I knew I was disturbed by something. All I got to do is look in the mirror and there's the problem. <laughs> yeah. Well, what you know, else? I think th- how- this is where like meditation really hits home is when you take it and you apply it to other stuff because um, meditation is, okay, you're focusing on the breath, like the, the guided that I've done anyway, right? You're focusing on your breath. Well, when you get away from it, the way to get yourself back to where you want to be, come back to focusing on your breath. And that's essentially what you're doing. You know, it's essentially like if life is crazy out of control, the first thing to come back to self care, right? Like that kind of a concept and everything is like, take everything like in baseball. If you can't hit the ball, all of a sudden you go into a slump. First thing they do is they go back at the core mechanics. Are you your elbow? Are you this? Are you, you know, like little, so it's like, take it all the way back to the beginning. If you have to, yeah, go back to your toolkit Mm -hmm. and go, okay, something in here isn't right. Let's re yeah. reorganize and and you know it's amazing how simple of an idea that is. Did that seems to be, <laughs> you know, yeah. to apply when you're in it. I'm, I'm my worst enemy. Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna screw myself in this neighborhood right up inside my head. Yes. <laughs> yeah, mm-hmm. you're the I'm only one. Dangerous element. Yeah. <laughs> Nobody else is right. You know, and the part is in the end where it's like, oh wow, we totally see things eye to eye, and I and I have absolutely. Like, oh, it was interesting feedback on, yeah, I would do it this way, but how I was doing it was kind of the same thing. It was just a little element of something or other. And and it was just that reminder, like, I'm time into this. I'm not a complete newbie. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not a hack. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah. it was, it was actually uh, confidence inspiring for mm-hmm. me to go back. It, 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 the feeling I can do something else made me say, oh, you know what? I can go back and finish that thing I've been putting off because I don't I, – I, I, I'm in fear of it. Yeah. I can finish yeah. that project that I have cho- – that I have just left as of doubts or whatever it is and it can do it and just my ability and, and be happy with it and call it good. So it was – that's my – that's the win out of all of it, you know, besides just the great lesson or reminder again of, of you know, why I – had a change in my life all these years ago yeah, right. and why it continues to work. So awesome. that's my week. <laughs> that's awesome. Yeah. They, um, one of the guys I, I work with, they, we have a safety meeting once a month and in the safety meeting, the person that's running it gets to decide, you know, what the topic is. And one of the guys did it on mindfulness. Hmm. Awesome. And yeah. And it was really cool to kind of hear from, you know, from in a business perspective, um, bringing in a lot of the different things that we talk about here, as well as, you know, things that I like to practice in my life and talk about how mindfulness and in, in just really having a purposeful um, take to your day and to your life. 
Yeah. And it was really interesting to kind of, you know, look at it that direction. It's interesting um, because I don't think mindfulness is considered a lot when you think of safety. A lot of sense. Oh, absolutely. Right? Mm-hmm. But, but all the time it's about mindfulness and read different articles. I don't remember any really coming up for like business safety, you know, but that does make a ton of sense. Yeah, and that's know? that's the thing where the the mindfulness of of – of making that commitment, I haven't thought about it in terms of that it is mindfulness because one of the, the safety meeting that I do is why do we do these safety things? It's not for work. It's for our friends and our loved ones at home. Yeah. Because they want to yeah. keep your eye on the right prize, meaning my loved ones, that brings you into the here and now, into the moment, into what's important. Mm-hmm. And you're allowed to take chances. And I've never really equated it with mindfulness. Yeah. But it does make, it makes yeah. tons of sense. Yeah. Yeah. We talk a lot about distractions and mm-hmm. we talk about, you know, the things that can cause problems, but from us, and we do talk about solutions, but it's never, but defies it, which is kind of cool. I'm glad you shared that. Yeah. yeah it was, too. it was really a, a great that, you know, that he brought that up. I was like, oh, it makes so much sense. Yeah. Good on good on him for for finding a take that is like we said like something that's kind of right there in front of you, but I think taken mm-hmm. for granted, you know. So and not, not not just for physical safety either, but for you know safety if you want to like protecting protecting your job essentially because if you're mindful about how you set out to do your tasks, you know you're you know going to be a little more focused, so you're less likely to make mistakes that could cost you your job as well, you know. So there's that angle mm-hmm. of it as well, but even though I know the main part of it's the physical. Exactly. So how was your week, Brian? Uh, that's been all right. Um, uh, Tony and I got together the other night, um, because we were doing the, you know, the salty language episode for, uh, um, about tea and it felt so weird because that's the first time him and I have hung out since, the quarantine stuff has started. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, so it's really, it was felt so strange being at someone else's house, you know, and, uh, went over there and, you know, we sat outside for a while and just kind of, you know, shot the breeze. And, and then, you know, we, we recorded our new episode as well as the other one. And, um, you know, unfortunately the sound on him is so bad that we're probably going to redo. We're definitely going to redo the T one. Him and I just talked a little bit ago. So we're, we're definitely going to redo it. Cause it's the sound is so bad on it. Our episode for this was bad, but Oh, well, these things happen from time to time. Cause it's either that, or we just don't put one up and it's like, well, we have it. We'll just put it up. If people don't want to listen to it, I understand, <laughs> you know, like it's, mm-hmm. it's a rough listen. So, but you know, it's funny, you know, salty language, the one that episode will be 461 of that show. And it's crazy. We've been doing that show almost what? Almost uh we're working toward 10 the 10th year. We're in the ninth year of it. Whatever, somewhere in that range. But anyway, um it's like we've had episodes not work before. We've had episodes, you know, that we've accidentally not recorded. We've had ones that have gotten deleted by the program. We've had Twitter die in the middle of me processing it. So it never posted, you know, just different stuff has happened, but it's so funny how like every time it happens, it's such a shot to, it feels like such a shot to your ego, (laughs) you know, like this one, you know, it was because something wasn't, there was something that didn't get clicked or whatever. come on we've been doing this long enough this shouldn't happen you know like that kind of thing um but at the same time you know like i said it's anyone who's done podcasts for any length of time knows you know it happens unfortunately (laughs) um plus you know we're not professionals at this we don't have an engineer that's sitting there that's checking everything constantly we don't you know all these things so it's you know it's it still, you know, sucks because even though we're not a professional podcast, we're not some big show or whatever, it's like, I still want to put out the best quality I can put out, you know, and I, I hate, you know, because I was always raised with the, you know, do a job you're proud of putting your name on type of a thing, you know, and <laughs> this one, I'm not real proud of putting my name on, but, <laughs> um, but I think that's kind of like, you know, Heno's thing with the, um, 
the let go or be joy. It's very much standing at that crossroad with it, which is I can just put it out there and just, you know, put a little thing that says, hey, this, you know, the audio's rough. Sorry. And I've heard plenty of podcasts do that over the years. Professional level podcasts, like Tim Ferriss level podcasts. There's some of his episodes where the audio is bad, you know, and he's one of the top podcasts out there. There's no excuse for him to put out a bad pro- program, you know, really. But, and it's like, so that, that shows it happens no matter what level you're at. Bad, you know, bad audio <laughs> happens to people. So, and it's, I'm at that point where it is really that let go or be dragged where it's like, I can keep stressing about it, worrying about it, over trying to over correct it and not really make that much of a difference. Or I can just go, look, it's done and just put it out there and worry and just move on to the next pitch. You know, that one went over the wall. Oh, well, you know, <laughs> I just, I just got to try to keep, keep this guy inside the park, you know? And, mm-hmm. you know, so that, that's been kind of tough for me. I was more disappointed at the T episode cause it also sounds like garbage. So, you know, we're going to have to record that again, just because we, neither one of us feel right putting, you know, with that level of quality. So, um, you know, there was that. And then today I was scheduled to have therapy. I get up, I look at my phone and I have a voicemail from the doctor and it's, Oh, you know, your therapist isn't in the office today. And it's like, this is the third time this has happened now. Mm. And it's like, come on. What the, you know, it's like, why are you like, and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to call tomorrow and be like, can you me? And I'm going to schedule with her because these last few times I've scheduled with desk and I don't know what it is, but they, every time they schedule me, she never seems to, and it's supposed to be a teleconference. So she doesn't, you know, I, I don't know. Oh my, I don't know what the requirements are for, you know her to do this because literally if she wants to just call me on the phone she could be anywhere i don't care you know so but it's at Weird. a point where it's like yeah i kind of i kind of feel like i really need the therapy so i'm gonna call tomorrow and be like you know ask if i can talk with her and when i talk with her i'm gonna be like hey um you know like I, i've had to put this off three times now can you know can we yeah. do something about this here because this is really stressing me out and you know I just, I'm in a point where I really need it, you know, like I'm, I I can feel that I need to get some stuff out of me and work some stuff through. So, you know, that, that was quite a stressor, but at the same time, it goes to the other stuff. It's like, what can I do about it? Nothing. I can't, you know, I called back today. She wasn't in obviously, or I didn't call back today because she's not in. So I'm going to call tomorrow in hopes that, you know, they can get her a message to call me. And that's all I can do about it, you know. Uh, it's stressful, but whatever, you know. I can't, I can't make it hurry. So there's no point in putting much else into it. Um, but other than that, it's been, you know, like I said, it was, it was really weird going to Tony's, but it was also to have that taste of regular life again. You know, mm-hmm. like mm-hmm. we hung out, we had some steak, we did some podcasts you know, had a couple beers. It it was just nice to feel a little normal again for a minute. And, you know, it's not something we're going to do all the time, but it was just nice to be able just to finally just do it once, you know, you know, I, it, it it was so weird though. Cause we both kept talking about that. We're sitting outside and I'm like, I just feel like we're doing something wrong. Like, I feel (laughs) like we're, you know, like we're, like we're getting away. So anyway, but yeah, so I mean it's been it's been an all right week other than that, you know. Um so nothing crazy or anything, just normal stuff, you know, going to the store and avoiding creep. So Which is a job in and of itself. Hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um <laughs> Shoot, there was something I was gonna say. I can't remember what it was now. When we were talking before the show, I was like, ah, I'll talk about it on the podcast and I can't remember what it was now. Huh. Oh well. Well, it comes up to you uh, up again. We can. Yeah, I probably. We won't. can always switch it. You know, my memory is. I'll I'll think of it in like six months. <laughs> well, my week's been pretty standard. You know, there's not a whole bunch going on. Um, because you know, I'm in, being in Michigan. We're still stay at home, so there's not much open. Um, that well, that's actually. I think things are starting to open back up. Yes, it's right. um next week. It's next week? Oh, the, okay. The 
12th, I believe, is the last day of stay at home unless she extends it, which I don't think I she don't will. I don't think she's going to, yeah. Yeah, so I think I think we're coming close to the end. Yeah. But um, it's I, I still kind of I waffle back and forth between um, what – what I should do and what I want to do, yes. I guess, is the, the thing. I, you know what I mean? I totally get you. Yeah, that's – Tony and I talked about that a little bit too because we've, you know, dealt with that back and forth as Ohio opened up. We were like, you know, it's like, well, we could go to a place with a patio and have a beer, you know, and hang out. And it's like, no, no, no. I know. And that's, like, my big thing in, again, perspective and, you know, per, you know, uh, I don't even know what to call it, but very first world problems. There we go. Yeah. First world problems. Mm-hmm. I really want my nails done. <laughs> and, yeah. you know, I really, really want my nails done. Yeah. My regular place is not open right now, obviously. So, again, it's the same thing. I, I could just cross the border, go over into Ohio and get my nails did. Mm-hmm. But then I'm like, you know what? I'm not supposed to. You know, <laughs> Michigan's had a lot of... of outbreaks and stuff up here and even though i'm not near one of the hot areas per se i'm still you know my laws in my state state that i need to be staying at home Mm -hmm. so being the good upstanding citizen (laughs) that i am i should behave myself well it's extra tough because you know, like me especially, but you also, we live so close to the border, you know? Yeah. Like about, I, I'm about 10 minutes away. Yeah. I live in Michigan, but I, I can almost throw a rock to Ohio. That's how close I am to it, you know? So it's, but it's still, I get what you're saying. It's like, we're really not, but it's like, yeah, but you can basically pull out of our, the neighborhood I live in and you're in Ohio basically. <laughs> <laughs> So it's it's just one of those things yeah. that so I've been kind of waffling back and forth with that, um, trying to figure it all out. Um, but most people, again, this is first world problems in the scheme of things and everything that's going on. Yeah. It's it's really a drop in the bucket. Um, is there any other allergy analogies I could come up with? <laughs> um, <laughs> anyways. Um, it's been pretty standard week, you know, the, the usual stuff. Um, a couple things that really stood out. Um, we lost um, a friend in, in one of my rooms on Twitter. I mean, I've spoken about my, my being on Twitter a lot to a lot of, you know, on the podcast before. Mm. And this was someone that was not a direct you know, we didn't have direct correspondence. It was all through this this chat room that we were in. We were just mutual friends through the chat room. Um, but unfortunately, he was a young man. Um, I'm calling him young because I figured I think it is young. You know? <laughs> yeah. So he was a very active um active guy he was participating in the protests and keeping us up to speed on what was going on from the front lines he was just the nicest guy and just a very you know always jumping in with the the positive comments and and just trying to make everybody happy and feel good um just a wonderful man and unfortunately he wasn't feeling all that great and never came back. They don't really know what happened. And odd oddness to it is very similar happened to our friend T. Yeah. And very similar circumstances. It was close enough to be uncomfortable for me. And it just really helped me examine things and put some perspective on stuff for myself. And really kind of give some introspection is to the choices I'm making in my life and is this the life I want to lead, lead and this is the life I want to live. It is, you know, I, I'd say I'm about, you know, 90% there. You know, there's stuff to work on, of course. There's always gone. Um, but I'm, I'm 
pretty happy with the way things are and what the choices that I'm making in my life. So, which was a good thing, you know, it was nice to kind of take that mental assessment and come, you know, it's not so bad, you know, there's, it's, it's pretty good. So that was, that was nice. It was interesting to kind of, um, you know, in something I, I ended up posting after he passed, which is that um, he was a big person who spread the love and kindness and acceptance. And now I feel I have the obligation to do that for both of us. Mm. So, you know, I'm taking that because the world lost some somebody who was a huge proponent of all the good things. And when somebody like that is no longer with us, then I take it upon myself that, okay, now I got to stop my game up because hmm. there's, there's a gap, there's an opening that needs to be filled. So, so now I am tasking myself with the of stepping up my game. I don't know what that looks like. I don't know how that's going to come about, but I know I'll do it because I'm challenging myself with it, mm. you know, and within the light of all of the protests and all the things that are going on right now, as I mentioned, I believe on the last podcast, I posted how I'm not equipped to do the battle, but I am equipped with other skills and I can think they go hand in hand. It's like, Using how do I use these skills to help to to bring some peace in some kindness to this very difficult situation? Still not sure exactly how it's going to happen or exactly how it's going to work, but I kind of like you, Tano. It's like you know I have faith in the higher power that I'm putting this out there, and the opportunities will come to me. I will find myself in these positions that I will I will know when it's time and what I needs to happen and what I need to do. So just kind of a lot of noodling around a lot of heavy subjects this week, you know, getting getting my mind wrapped around that type of stuff. Um it's it's interesting when when you take some time out in, and I think that's a lot of what people have been doing lately um, with the quarantine and all that stuff is taking the time out to really some self reflection, some slowing down, some really taking a look at perspective and what's important to us. And I think we're, we're better for it. And you know, I'm hopeful that when we get underneath all of the gun right now, that we will be a better people for it and better in every way. Which kind of brings me into the subject for tonight. A little segue there. Um, the subject tonight, I, I have the article, which is Don't Let Hope Keep You Stuck. And I think it's easy to wish and hope things away. And in the essence, we kind of get stuck in our own path. We don't move forward because we kind of are putting too much reliance on others and the higher powers and other things and not putting enough reliance on ourselves. So this article really kind of talks about different ways that you can um, move past that. Uh, starts with, I hope that this whole COVID way so we can resume our regular lives. I think we've all heard that one before uh -huh. and said it ourselves. <laughs> I know I have. Uh, I hope this quarantine will be over soon. Yep. I hope that things will go back to how they used to be. Yes and no on that one. Yeah. But yes. Uh, you may be thinking, wishing, or even hoping these things and are just waiting for things to get better. Definitely me in the first few weeks of quarantine. 
Recently, I've been pondering the possibility that COVID-19 may actually never go away and we may have to learn to adapt and live with it. It may be like influenza, seasonal, with a recommendation, and it may just be a new virus in our lives. We don't know when the quarantine will be over, and even when we're given a specific date, the date keeps getting pushed further and further back. I'm seven weeks into quarantine, just waiting for shelter in place to be lifted. The bleak reality is that so we'll slowly adapt to the new normal. Things will never go back to how they used to be, ever. And that makes me feel disheartened, discouraged, and a bit sad. When I'm able to be mindful and sit with these feelings and thoughts from a non-judgmental place, I'm able to see that I'm clinging to the past and how things used to be. At the same time, I'm being unrealistically hopeful about the future, and it will keep getting me stuck. The cause of my suffering, wishing for things to be different than they presently are, I am reminded to be mindful, to be in the present moment, to accept what it is without judgment. Yeah, and I kind of want to stop there for a minute and we can kind of talk a little bit about that. I mean, we kind of all, each one of us touched a little bit on, on this thought that, you know, being present and accepting. It's tough to accept what is uncomfortable and what is not, not the norm for ourselves. You know, mm-hmm. um, I know we cannot, everybody has, has mentioned different things in our personal lives that we've been going through that are kind of along those lines. Yeah, it's, it's really tough with, with the stuff because it's a lot of this, it's, it's something normally when something kind of changes in our lives, we have some sort of end in sight or what you know like if you get a cold you usually know it's going to be a week and then you'll feel okay again or whatever Mm -hmm. and with this we don't we don't know if we'll get it we don't know hearing it we don't know how long it'll last you know like there's so many uncertainties with this that it makes it hard to look past it you know and by nature we want to do that and i think that's you know i listened to a, a podcast talking about that that that's part of how we normalize things is that we, when we encounter something tough, we essentially will go, you know, when this is over, blah, 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 you know? Mm -hmm. And and it is tough to do with this because we don't know when or if it'll be over. It's one of the things that did bother me a little bit was when the author mentioned, you know, that this, you know, things will never be, you know, whatever again. It's like, we we don't a hundred percent know that, you know, we may come with vaccines and different stuff and then things feel like they did before it essentially, aside from, like you said, like influenza, maybe you go once a year and get a shot. Other than that, life is essentially the way it was before we dealt with this, you know? Um, but it's also weird to me because so many people like when we, and like you said, we the, you know, I uh, wish things would go back to normal. And even just a little bit ago, I'm nice to have that piece of normal again. Um, but at the same time, it's like, if you look at our lives, things shift and rotate in our lives all the time. It's normal. Even though realistically, most people have a, they get up, they go to work, they come home, whatever. But, you know, like if you have kids, there's part of the year they're not in school. There's part of the year for all of us where, well, for a lot of us that where it's cold, then it's hot, you know, left in our lives. And we just adjust because we've been doing that for a long time. So like you said, it's like this could literally just become a thing where we just have to have a shot every year or something to that effect. Mm -hmm. Or it flares up like the flu does every year to where even with the shot, you could still get sick. But it's, you know, we don't know. So it's hard to really it's hard to see ourselves being normal with this as part of our life, you know? So I, I, I just think it's kind of weird though. Cause like I said, we all have random things thrown at us on a regular basis and we just engulf those in our, our hurricane of life and, and just keep moving forward. And we don't think about mm-hmm. it. It's only because we had to stop this time that I think we're really like, noticing different things that we never noticed before because finally we're like someone's like hey <laughs> you know <laughs> there's not normally a time out in life unless you know you <clears throat> gotta stay home for surgery or something like that to where you have time to sit and or you lose your job or something so it's 
you know, mm-hmm. I think that's why we're we're hyper focused on this because if this just happened, but everyone was still able to work, I don't think this would feel like most people wouldn't feel like this is that because people are always sick going to work. You could always get sick going to work, you know, all these kind of things. So I, it's just kind of funny to me how how easy it is for us to go from something to where on a normal basis we're like, hey, no big deal. But because things shifted just a little off the off direction. Now it's like, oh, <laughs> you know, like it's <laughs> the biggest deal. So, and I'm not in any way minimizing COVID, by the way. I just want to make sure that's clarified. I'm not minimizing that, you know, what's happening with people. It's just, like I said, I, I, I don't know. Just the stuff we've been asked to do, if we just were still able to go to work, I think most people would be like, eh, whatever, you know, and just do it, you know, and we just move forward. Acceptance doesn't mean liking, wanting, resenting, or giving up. It just means acknowledging what is. By resisting and rejecting the current situation, we create unnecessary suffering. Having hope is not a bad thing. Maybe it's what gets you out of bed each day or helps you stay motivated. Maybe it's something to look forward to and it helps you in some way wonderful. Hope is a beautiful thing as long as it's helping you take action and not just keeping you stuck in a waiting state. A waiting state based on external circumstances, an unforeseeable future date, or potential something that may or may not ever happen is not very helpful. Constant living in the state of hope, just sitting and waiting for a better future, can prevent us from experiencing the present moment, may stop us from accepting what is and seeing what is in front of us right now. It can stop us from being present because we're so focused on the future. And I think that's kind of where we're at right now is coming out of all of the quarantines and stuff that it's not going away, you know, at least not, we don't have an end date. We don't have a foreseeable future. It's not going away. Mm -hmm. We have to find a way to accept it and start moving forward. Cause like you were saying, Brian, it's like, we're, we're stopped. It's like everything stopped, which in some ways is good. Mm -hmm. In some ways I think it was detrimental. Getting back to our planning for the future again, getting back for to our our routines and things, I think is so important mm. to start moving forward. Yeah, it will be interesting because I I saw and heard so many people say, "Oh, once the quarantine's over, I'm gonna this or this," and it's like, well, time to sh- you know put up or shut up because <laughs> a lot of the quarantines <laughs> are being lifted around. So it's like, all right, let's see what you got. Um, yeah, you're right though. It is, it is tough. Like I said, is humans, we want to plan ahead. That's what we like to do, you know, especially around the time this hit because everybody wants to make summer plans. You know, they want to go to concerts or vacations or whatever it is. And basically the world was like, yeah, nah, (laughs) you know, like (laughs) you can't do any of those things. So it, a lot of people were kind of like, well, now what do we do? Because that's what so much effort goes into in the spring is planning the summer and fall times. And basically told, yeah, not so much. Things may not be back open then. So, you know, we'll we'll see how it goes with things slowly being reopened and whatever. But um, shoot, there was something in there I was going to mention. I can't remember what it is now. Ah, well. So oh, oh really, really quick. Right. Sorry. It was that, you know, if, if for some reason you can't quite think about being stuck by hope, if you've ever been in like an, un, uh, a situation where, uh, oh shoot, what is it called? Un, uh, God, I can't think of the word now. Dang brain's not functioning right. Uh, where you're in love with somebody else and they don't reciprocate. Um, Unrequited? Requited. Yes. Um, you know, that's one of those scenarios where a lot of times, or if you're hoping that somebody you like will get out of a relationship they're in so they can be with you or whatever, and you're just waiting. Meanwhile, you never know what you could be missing out on because you're laser focused on, you know, this other thing, um, you know, uh, or really anything, you know, I, I'm guiltiest of, you know, I, I look for years and years I've done it and I can't break my head of it, which is, you know, I'd look at artists and be like, you know, want to be like them. And it's just like, I'm just waiting for that catalyst. I just need, you know, and it's like, well, you know, times and just put your own foot in your high knee and, you know, get after it. Like the way you get to those levels is you put the work in, you know, 
and mm-hmm. I know fully well I haven't put the work in. So, <laughs> you know, so I can't expect anything I sit down and draw or create to look like the people who've put 15 years of work in, you know. So hope isn't going to get the job done. You got to actually, you know, make sure you get your hands dirty once in a while. Absolutely. Uh, It is possible to live in hope, but also live in the present in a state of acceptance. Incorporating mindfulness with hope allows you to create visions and desires that inspire action. It allows you to see things clearly for what they are, to accept and propel you forward to become a better version of yourself. From the subtle shift, you are empowered. You have clarity. You can make choices. You can act. You can choose. You accept the situation as it is right now. Wishing to exist instead of wishing for it to be different. This reduces our resentment and operate from a mindful place of clarity. Perhaps then we can cultivate something called wise hope. As Zen teacher Joan Halifax says, wise hope is not seeing things unrealistically, but rather seeing things as they are, including the truth of suffering, both its existence and our capacity to transform it. We can either resist the current situation, thus suffer, or we can accept it, take actions to transform it, and focus on what we can do right now. Yeah, that's that's good advice because it's like in therapy when, you know, I've been told about, like, whatever your goal is, is to bring it down to the tiniest step. Like, whatever the smallest step you see as manageable and start mm-hmm. there, you know, like you know, you're, you're, if you're young and your end goal is, you know, I want to play in the NBA, you're clearly not going to, as a 10 year old, be playing in the NBA, but what you can do is practice like crazy, you know, like that's something you can do to put, keep yourself on that path, you know, and, and the hope is that you end up there, but you're putting the hard work in, in the meantime, so that you're Mm -hmm. still living in the present, you know, you're, you're currently working on your goal. So, you know, and I know I use the NBA as a lofty thing, but if there's some job you want, but you know you're not qualified for it, what can you do to do that? Or if you're not happy in your job, what can you do to get to where you hope you can be or whatever? You know, is find those down to a manageable level and start there, you know, mm-hmm. rather than just sit and hope, you know? I think exactly. That's... That last one is just really setting a high bar. I mean, it really is. It, that is not an easy place to get to. Yeah. Mm-hmm. My experience. like, and, and yet it depends on the situation. Like when I think about the wait to know whether I was going to be – whether I was going to get my house or not, mm-hmm. that I was not capable of that level of <laughs> – yeah i I couldn't there was just too much riding on it too much anxiety too much yeah uh too much fear uh too much in other people's hands that it's different than something like okay when the local health you know Gonna, you know the the whatever government i guess health office gonna allow something to happen that one is easier to let go than when is my real estate agent yeah or, you know when it's somebody sure. right there where you're within community you still have to be accepting of uncertainty versus mm-hmm. like it's easier to accept uncertainty from you know a bureaucracy yeah when it's further mm-hmm. away from you yeah. And what's really easy right now, though, for me is my trip to Jamaica in October. Well, I don't lose anything by it. If we can't go for whatever reason, it'll all be rescheduled. Flights will be credited and rescheduled. The vacation will be rescheduled. Mm-hmm. I know that's going to happen. There might be some rare exceptions where that doesn't happen. But for the most part, it's going to happen. Anxiety about that. I'm hopeful of the trip. Yeah, but I'm not locked in my hope. It's not, you know. Whereas the the house thing was difficult. Yeah, that, that, that was way mm-hmm. too involved with that. And it does and take a long time for for some people for that, like the closing or you know, to get to that. I mean, you know, it's not like a car where you know while you're sitting there, you're gonna. Well, get it's it. a day or two. The yeah. house thing, you're living. You have to live in it. And and then the it's just that's. 
that's the one where I see so many people struggle is where they've put in the work towards something and now they just basically have to wait and take off. And that level of patience is very – it's just difficult to achieve. Yeah. You know, but it is. that's a great goal. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. There is make sure you're on the same uh, – make sure you're staying on the path. Like – constantly trying to make sure you're still on the path toward what you're going after, you know, but it's, it's tough. Like you said, especially if it's something you don't see, you know, when you hit a point, when you hit a wall, you know, whether it's with weight loss or, or a job, you know, path or whatever, it's like, it's like, okay, I'm doing all the work, but nothing is happening here. It's, it's hard to stay motivated and stay in that place. You remind me of the thing like, oh, okay, well, I will do this when, you know, I'll go on vacation when I've got my bikini body. Yeah. All right. Exactly. Buy a bikini and put it on your body. You've got a bikini body. <laughs> right. And <laughs> I mean, that's technology. Every, you know, Angela yep. and I used to talk about that all the time. It's yeah. like, don't wait for that. Go on vacation, buy a bikini, put it on your body. You've got a bikini body. Right. And live yeah. your life. And that, that was something that I think was, is, is that's an easy way to understand acceptance. Yeah. You know, I wish there was an easy way to convey getting okay with living in uncertainty. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yes. And it's, it's difficult. And it's something that is not, um, it's not perfect. It's not a perfect science. You're not going to be perfect at it. Some True. things are going to be harder than others. And it's okay. You know, like you said, it's a lofty goal. It's something to strive for. And if you never obtain it, that's okay too. Mm -hmm. The whole goal is to keep it. And that's the part where I was listening to a podcast today and it was about, you know, one of my hobbies as far as like doing music. People have the, you know, am I good enough to do this? Am I good enough to do this as a living? And, you know, he brought up a lot of things that were we've talked about here. It's like the the you can find lots of instances of of something that was very moving artistically, but it wasn't perfect, but it moved people. And and they put out the best thing that they had at that time and it made a connection. So, you know, you can't second guess whether something's gonna make a connection or not to in whatever you're doing at that moment. And sometimes it's just, it's just try to be the best you for that day, especially when you can't control what's going on around you where other people have their, you know, their, their fingers are on the strings. You don't have those fingers on the strings. You have to have faith and hope in them that it's going to come through. So what can you do? What's, what's the thing? Well, what are you doing right now? Try to do it the best you can, whether it's getting up in the morning and making yourself some coffee, Going, you know, getting yourself to the gym or whatever activity, and getting to try to get through that day in the best way of you being you, so that. And this was the hard thing that I struggled with, is that at the end of the day, I felt proud of myself for how I handled myself that day. Where that's difficult is is the thing that you're struggling with. That's where you want to act out. Yeah, true. And that's the hard thing. And and if you can just. It, the hardest thing is to put that on the back burner and allow you to at least achieve in something else. I mm-hmm. couldn't do it. I just couldn't do it. Yeah. But it's I've done hard. worse. That's the one thing. I've done way worse. <laughs> <laughs> so I so I had that going for me. There you go. Well, she goes on to talk about reframing. Uh, Personally, I know that if I stay in the wishing things were different mindset and after weeks of isolation and who knows how much longer, I can easily go downhill into oversleeping, procrastinating, being lazy, binging Netflix, eating absorbent amounts of ice cream, and not keeping up with my self-care while just hoping things will improve. These things can quickly snowball into decreased mood, increased negativity and anxiety, unproductivity, and even depression. I know how easy it is to slip into that, and I don't want to go there. Rather, I consciously choose not to go there. It all starts with how I reframe my thoughts through acceptance and take action. So some examples that she gives. um, My hope. I hope that this whole COVID-19 thing goes away so we can resume our regular lives. Action and acceptance. I don't know if this COVID-19 thing will ever really go away, but to feel more normal during isolation, the action I'm going to take is to keep my daily routine. 
That means going to sleep at a reasonable time, setting an alarm even on weekends, getting fresh air and sunlight on my patio, meditating, eating well, stretching and practicing yoga, doing push-ups, showering, and prioritizing my self-care. I know that even on the days I don't feel like doing these things, I have the power to choose. I can choose not to do these things and feel crappy and productive and lazy, or I can choose to continue my daily routine because I know it will increase my overall happiness and well-being. I love that word, choose. Yeah, and that's that was like I fell into in the first you know month that. Oh yeah, I think I stopped, we all did. I, I stopped doing everything. Mm-hmm. You know? I did exactly what that you know just got lost in whatever it was, TV shows or you know. The, the reading part was good. Playing video games, whatever it was, I I tried to do some physical health stuff, but for the most part, I couldn't. It, I just I didn't make those choices. Mm-hmm. I chose something else, and I don't think it was. I mean, was it? The, it really wasn't that bad. I guess it could have been better. Yeah, mm-hmm. I don't know. You know what's interesting though is like from the flip side of that is I saw different people who were really beating themselves up because they yeah. chose to watch Netflix or play video mm-hmm. games or whatever. And it was like, well, you're right. That's no I good either. Over yeah, it. yeah. That's no good that's either. You know? Yeah. It's I, like, I did. I chose to do this. I said, you know what? I'm going to enjoy having the schedule be a little messed up for a while. Yeah. There's nothing that's going to happen. That's going to set me so far back. There's no, you know, yeah, I'm going to get out of shape a little bit. I'll get back into shape. Yeah. That's right. So yeah, I guess, I guess the, the choose is the key word yeah. there. Is, and, yes. They, yes. She wants you to choose this path. Mm-hmm. If you don't choose that path, don't put yourself up. Right. That's what I was going to yeah. say. Is, that's Just the right choice, choice for her. And I think that's yeah. the key. Well, like yeah. for her, yeah. for some yeah. other people, it wasn't because mm-hmm. the pressure of it, like, you know, there were a couple weeks or whatever, and they took it kind of as a vacation because, you know, they work a lot of hours, they do all this other. So it's like they gave themselves a break. And they chose to do that. So there's nothing wrong with that either. So whatever you chose, it's fine. But she's saying, which is if you chose that other way and you find yourself like, hey, this isn't working for me, you know, then maybe try the other choice because maybe that need, you know, or, or some some choice in there or whatever it is you need. But, you know, like I said, just be careful. Whatever you choose, just remember you chose that and it's OK. Oh, you know, yeah. And just be actively involved. I, I really think that's where it comes down to is just involved in your thought process and your decision making. You know, don't just sit back and just let the decision for you. Just take an, an active participation in in these decisions and realizing that it's not, not just life happening to you, but you have some control and you have some obligation to make these decisions to help yourself. That's key. Even if it is just what's your attitude for the day, which was something yes. that was some of my, my toughest days was just like trying to, if I could just maintain a positive attitude in the middle of the uncertainty, that would have been the, 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 the minimum. Yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yes. And, and that's where I could have done better. The next one she said is, I hope this quarantine will be over soon. So that's the hope, the action and the acceptance. Although I hope this quarantine will be over soon, all this extra time is such an opportunity. I finally start reading the books that I had been on my shelf for the last year. Began that online course I've always wanted to take. Made bread from scratch. Deep cleaned my house. Stunning thing. I reassessed my 2020 goals that I had set out earlier in the year and made a to-do list and a want-to-do list that I can work toward given the current situation. I've been able to complete some of the things on my want to do list and it brought me a lot of joy. So again, you know, she might be a little bit more ambitious than some of us who have been. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Just get accepting it and owning what your, your choice is. And Mm -hmm. yeah, I really like the last part of what she said, which was about, um, reassessing your goals and everything, because like the reason that a lot of people don't, have time for something is because they don't feel they have time for something you know Mm -hmm. um i just listened to a podcast on this a few weeks ago i can't remember what show it was 
but they were talking about that because this woman actually was advocating like through your day to basically book free time for yourself, you know, and mm-hmm. the person on the podcast was kind of like, Oh no, I, I wouldn't be able to do that. And, then, and she goes, yeah, you actually can. She's like, and I'll show you kind of a five minutes, you know, give yourself things, you know, like the concept of like, I've been a huge advocate for over the years, which is, you know, when you have a lunch at work, never work at your desk or eat at your desk, always go somewhere else because that change of scenery is essentially free time. It's giving you a break. You know, a lot of people could go, you know, you go sit in your car and listen to an audio book during that time. If you want to get more reading done, there's your opportunity for that. You know, so there's, there's ways. A lot of people just feel that they constantly don't have time. But if you really break your day down, again, we go to the, do you not have time? Or are you refusing to prioritize time for something else? You know, some people actually don't have time. Their days are packed. But there are a lot of people where they could probably shave off, you know, like one person I saw online talking about it was talking about how every day at Starbucks, they wait about 10 or so minutes to get their coffee. They quit going to Starbucks. They started making their coffee at home. So now that frees up 10 minutes there, you know, and little things they could do through the day, just slight changes that gave them now, you know, after making a few changes, now they have time to go for an uh, an hour walk every day you know, that they wanted to do. So, you know, there, there's that element in there too, is some of these things, if you find that it's like, wow, I really need to do more of this. Like I want to read more, cut out some of your social media time, cut out some, you know, find other things where maybe these are things you're just doing because you're just doing, you know, Mm -hmm. like, because you've been doing them. And, and I think that's a, a great thing there is that it did give her that chance for reflection have been stopped it's a great time to really look at where you are in your life and how happy you are and can you make changes? And if so, there's your new plan for the second half of the year, you know? She fin- closes up with, there are many sides to hope as they are to love, believe just about anything. Too much of anything can cause us to be unrealistic, close minded, rigid, and blind. Psychologist Carl Jung refers to this as the shadow aspect. Perhaps this can be considered a shadow side of hope and nonetheless important to consider. Although this quarantine may be frustrating, boring, lonely, stressful, fill in the blank, it can be an opportunity to reset, transform, grow, change direction, and reinvent yourself. What will you choose? But again, since we're making choices, you own this the exact same person you were before, and that's okay too. (laughs) Yes. Yes. It's all about making active, cognizant choices. Because yeah. the one that's like, you know, pay attention to those who reached out to you during, you know, quarantine and, and, you know, the ones who didn't cut them out. And it's like, no, we're all dealing with our own stuff and going, you know, don't do that. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, if you want to, that's your choice. But it's like, that's a that's not a great reason to do it. You know, if you want to use it as a factor, maybe, but not as a don't use that as a decisive thing. You know, and, but it's the same thing. It's like, if, if you want to make changes in your life, cool. If you don't, that's also fine. You know, we, we've all dealt with whatever we've dealt with in there and maybe you're happy and content with your life and you're just waiting to get back to it. You know, like if, so, you know, there's nothing wrong with feeling that way either, you know? So yeah, the choice in this is like, whatever you choose, you know, just, you know, think it through. And also, you know, just remember you made the choice. So if you're not happy, you can change your mind. Like that's okay. I know it's a crazy thing, but we're as adults, we're allowed to change our mind. It's okay. You know, unless you're a politician, like like, allow yourself the right to be wrong. Yeah. Right. Yes. And And then, and then if, if you're allowed to be wrong, then you can reverse course and try something different. Right. Exactly. Mm. Yep. Life is a choose your own adventure. You can always go back to the past. Yep, that's why I never take my thumb off the original the original part. No. <laughs> yeah, you gotta leave leave a little bookmark. Like the original idea. The Family Guy gag where he's sitting in bed and he's reading the uh, Choose Your Own Adventure, and he chooses one thing and he points out to Lois. He's like, "Look, I didn't take my thumb off the page. I didn't take my." And she's like, "Yeah, yeah, it's okay." <laughs> Like he's cheating or something. It's like, oh, stop it. Anyone who's read a choose your own adventure, 
everybody's read like kind of do i like this one better or this one and then you go that way you know Fun. anyone who says they didn't a liar i'll this n- true. never believe you <laughs> yeah <laughs> love it well what do you think guys we good pretty good yeah awesome well folks it's about that time so if you would like to continue the conversation you know what to do you can reach us at the crazy life podcast.weebly.com is our website the crazy life at outlook.com is our email address if you'd like to reach me direct you can reach me on twitters at jen's crazy life that's jen with the g if you would like to hear more from me, you can hear me on another podcast called Shake the Sheets. It's a pop culture talk podcast that I do with my co-host, Nate. Uh, you can find us on most of the um, podcast streaming sites and all that good jazz. And Heno, how can they find you? Twitter at Ida Heno. You can find me on Facebook, Heno Heiter, and Facebook Messenger. And my other podcast, Moving the Needle Podcast, this week we're going to be releasing a review of a foreign film called The Discreet Charm of the Bourgeoisie, which is a French film from the early 70s that won a bunch of awards. It's a um, – oh, I'm forgetting what the, the category is. Of, um, there's a lot of like sequences and really – odd and that kind of stuff based around what would be a normal activity you know hmm. so all right uh, anyhow it, it, i really liked it and it was kind of fun and i'm not usually a fan of foreign films so uh yeah if you're into that check it out now our next week's foreign film was just downright disturbing and it was amazing <laughs> so, <laughs> all right from 2000 revenge or mm-hmm. whodunit in the films yeah this basically takes Every revenge film, TV show, and says, "Here, hold my beer." Now, this, this is the movie that the uh, Spike Lee movie was based on, right? Yes. Okay. And the Spike Lee movie is garbage compared to this. <laughs> okay. I haven't seen either of them, so I always wanted to see the original, and I never did. Uh, yeah, I recommend it. South in the South Koreans can do to do. So there's some disturbing stuff in this thing, right. but it is so well done. So we're going to release that one next week. So, yeah, if you want to uh, listen to us chat about Old Boy, go watch it this week. All right. Well, you can find me on Twitter at Stunami. You can find my other podcast at Salty underscore Language or at SaltyLanguage.com or anywhere you can find other podcasts. Um, show's not safe for that. And, you know, may, maybe don't, uh, you know, 461 is not the best jumping on point. Maybe jump on at 460. <laughs> And then do a 461, because uh, 461 is going to sound like hot trash. <laughs> so, <laughs> but uh, yeah, so definitely check that out. And uh, yeah, you can find this show on Twitter at The Crazy Life Pod, where I post when new episodes go up. Uh, you can follow us on Facebook. Come be part of our group at facebook.com slash group slash crazy life podcast. Um, we're a part of the Tangent Bound Network, which can be found at tangentboundnetwork.com. So please go check out other shows that are on that network. And yeah, I think that's all the the linky stuff. But uh, you, if you need help, please reach out for help. Uh, you know, there's tons of things available out there, especially with all the stuff going on right now between, you know, like I said last week, between the civil rights stuff, the in covid stuff and there's just there's a lot of heavy heavy stuff going on around no matter uh who you are you know don't forget you can't help others you know with with an empty cup so make sure you're practicing self-care so if you need some help get some help yeah you know and of course you know please reach out to your friends and family make sure they're doing okay and try to you know uh just check in on them and everything and then of course you know Let's all practice kindness and, and yeah, just trying to be the best people we can be. There's a whole going on right now. There's a lot of people struggling. So, you know, just, you know, like I said, try to show some empathy and when you can, you know, exercise kindness and be safe. All right, everybody with the best week you possibly can and uh, love a little bit more. So with that, Wiggle your toes and have a great week.